and myself. Mm. How do you tap into that? And you have this um, almost available group of people that everybody's going back to the village to celebrate Christmas. Mm. So you go back home and celebrate Christmas, and then what next after that? Just I'll go back to my original definition of these groups. They represent definitely the best of the best in each of the regions. Mm. But when it comes to implementation, they are, they are touched with the ordinary person would require the government yeah. structure to mm. come in. Mm. Often, mm. There is, the, then there is either disconnect or some silent rivalry. Mm. When a group like this is organizing, then the district councils and the, the sub-county councils will want their place to be respected. So you cannot actually cascade an initiative down to the people without having to have synergies with those structures, isn't which often isn't is isn't lacking. Isn't isn't but also isn't remember, isn't one of the weaknesses, in my view, in terms of implementing rural development is lack of enforcement. Mm. And then you have the local structures are elected and they are populist. Then you have this group that is organizing, like the Toro group, they are in Teso, they are everywhere. They, they will be sort of in the middle. So what locus, to use the legal language, locus will they right. have Looks, yeah. to, to actually cause people to do something, you know? Yeah. So it, it, I think it, that's it, where it, the challenge it, is. It, it, and it, I really it, request, it, it, I, I see Kresa this has, in the, has, in has the Teso initiatives, yes. that there is that disconnect yes. between the good intentions mm. of uh, a, a regional grouping and its ability to get to the people. Mm. They may be, they, they need to work with the MPs, mm. but above all with the district system, uh, which as often as does not happen. Yes, as you, as you respond, let, <coughs> me, let me just pause this. Mm. Might there not be benefits mm. in forcing government, especially at the central level, mm. and even at the local government level, mm. to chase after initiatives like this? Because governments might be a little bit more responsive mm. to organized people or peoples than trying to lead these same initiatives. Mm. Because that, that, that's where you get lost. If, if you come and find um, Toro has mobilized and put together 100 million shillings mm. to start the education fund, mm. who knows it could rise to half a billion mm. or even a billion shillings mm. in a short while. And the community initiative is putting into, through school, in strategic courses, mm. when you have this debate about science and arts, mm. in strategic courses and is able to fund the government will think we are losing relevance here, aren't we? Of course. Maybe we need to pick to pick up from there mm -hmm. and, 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 and and do something that, better. That's why the first <laughs> step <laughs> I think is to divorce politics, which is very hard. Yes. Because you have been seeing like there's this North American something. Uganda North American Association. Whatever it organizes, almost the whole government wants to go and participate. No, you, and you, I think you know has suffered <laughs> significant I know there are people viewing us now. Um, mm. uh, in the diaspora, mm. who are part of UNA. Yes. They've gone through an election. Mm. They have petitioned they want to do the election again. And following UNA, mm. which was one of the best mm. representations of Uganda in the diaspora, mm. was the moment politics yes. uh, took a plane and arrived in, mm. uh, I, I don't know if they were in Boston or they were in um, mm. Seattle, somewhere. Mm. Boston. Yes, and arrived there mm. and tried to put yellow and blue <laughs> and red into the leadership. <laughs> <laughs> he died. Mm. How are you going to avoid yeah. this? You wanted to respond to <laughs> no, Before I go to the politics yeah. one, Charles, I do mm. really appreciate the disconnect and mm. the lack of implementation mechanism that such groupings find themselves uh, in. Eh? Mm. Uh, what We are very much aware of that. Mm. Mm. We are also aware of the, of the feeling that certain quotas may, feel, may, may, may get as if this grouping is trying to usurp some of their powers. Mm -hmm. So what we do at the end of the conference is once we have all our recommendations and resolutions, mm -hmm. we sit in a smaller group and say who is going to do what. Mm -hmm. Because we do not have an implementing arm. Mm -hmm. We know that there are some things which will be implemented at sub-county level. If it's at sub-county level, who is going to do it? At the district level, who is going to do it? At the national level, who is going to be our coordinator? And then we say that the, this, the core, the, the committee mm. of the Toro Elders Forum, which is in charge of TPC, will be liaising with these people who are not against TPC, mm. will be liaising to ensure that what we have resolved to do 
is being done. So the, the, the follow-up mechanism is not for implementation. It's to follow up to see if the implementers of what we have resolved to do mm. are actually on course. Okay, let, let me put a quick, a quick question there. Are you able to marshal sufficient people pressure? Not yet. To, fo to, to make sure that these resolutions and the duty bearers are going to be put... No, not yet. Yes. Not yet. But it's, it, and it, but it's on the table for discussion. The minute you get a buy-in by all these different segment, segments of our society to say, yes, this is a good thing for us and we can rally around it, I think we'll get there. Re Regina, this is just the second. Yes. Regina, let me come to you quickly. You, you have this initiative you've been following up on um, gender-based violence. It remains alive across the country, mm. uh, affecting both men and women. Mm. You, you had 16 days of activism, something like that? Yes. Yes, 16 days of activism. Mm -hmm. How do you tie some of this discussion? Because you, you're talking about education, you're talking mm -hmm. about economic mobilization, you're talking about political, political. consciousness, mm -hmm. but you also need to talk about social. these other social issues mm -hmm. that tie communities mm -hmm. back. So uh, how would that, um, if you could say something about that, maybe? Uh, when it comes to community mobilization. Uh, especially the gender-based gen violence aspect yes, on that. Yes. Uh, community mobilization for addressing gender-based violence. Yes, it is important that, of course, first of all, we look at the existing structures, but also help the citizens to identify what the causes of uh, gender-based violence are, and uh, to also appreciate that each of us and the different uh, prayers have, have power and they have the ability to address the issues of gender-based violence. But of course what is also happening is that uh, when you look at what is uh, happening and as Honor is saying and uh, Honor has just mentioned, at times such issues are politicized and at the end of the day you don't see uh, a lot uh, being being done and therefore what you have done for example during the the recent 16 days of activism we had to make sure that we minimized the duplication mm. this time it was a very big campaign with each of us making sure that we share what it is that we wanted to do mm. so that we are able to cover as much as possible utilize the resources that we have but at the same time, bring as many people mm. as possible on board. So likewise, in other social, economic, and political uh, initiatives, I think that has to be borne in mind that each one of us has potential, each one of us has capability, and that those capabilities and potentials need to be tapped into if we want to see change. Mm. Yeah. I, I, if you want to see change, do you see that you can actually create that change? Yes. That's why I've mentioned that each one of us needs to identify and appreciate that you have the power. Uh, the power to cause that change. And how can that be realized? It's by identifying those that have the ability, those that have the power to to change what is actually happening both at individual and at community level. Because we have institutions, for example, that are supposed to be address, helping us to address issues of gender-based violence. If they do not have the means with which, with, the, with which they can help, then obviously those who are suffering gender-based violence continue uh, having the problem. And therefore, there is need for both the survivors those who are at the service points to discuss and uh, know that each one of us has really to, most importantly, to break mm. the silence. Okay. And therefore, even with these other problems, uh, not necessarily gender-based violence, we need to talk about the issues. Therefore, the, the, the point we need to emphasize is discussing these issues so that each one of us understands them. And the causes. Yes, and the causes. Yes, and the causes. We'll need to be taking a quick yes. commercial break. But as yeah. we take the break, uh, let me just mention this, uh, which will be, because when we come back, we'll be doing our last segment. So we'll come back a bit to the debate in Parliament tomorrow uh, to crown this off. But also address, there's some uh, disturbing statistics 
uh, that have come out recently. One is a statistic about a health-related issue, HIV-AIDS numbers, broken down at community level. December, was, uh, uh, December 1 was World AIDS Day. Mm. You also have a statistic that's been recurring. The, the, you, 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 you've had um, the question of um, inflation. Uganda National Bureau of uh, Statistics has been releasing these numbers. Mm -hmm. And Fort Porter has, been, uh, has earned itself that um, unenviable position of the district with the highest inflation, uh, food inflation especially. My question will be, uh, when we come out of the break, is from Teso through Kavale, Toro, Atrolli and elsewhere, what are those opportunities that exist back in the community mm -hmm. that could be tapped into with initiatives like this? And the other question is, yes, those other problems, those other issues that exist within the communities, what is the space for? Welcome back to this last segment of the fourth estate. We're discussing community mobilization and particularly focusing on a major conference in Toro called the Toro People's Conference or TPC 2017, which will be happening at the end of the week, uh, Friday and Saturday, to ask the question, is community mobilization the solution to Uganda's many challenges? Um, I, Ona, I don't have a particular problem mm. with people ethnicizing problems, if you can put mm. it that way, mm. looking at, because uh, unless mm. people begin looking at their individual problems yeah. and then aggregating them into mm. national problems, yeah. you'll never have a national discussion. Yeah. So if, if the people of Teso can be self-interested mm. in improving education mm. and rebuilding what was, and another group has a similar interest, mm. you, you'll never have a national discussion. Uh, otherwise, everybody will be driving their children to mm -hmm. private schools in Kampala mm -hmm. and then driving them back, depriving local economies of mm -hmm. that much-needed money. Mm -hmm. But you never have a national discussion on what is wrong with, for example, education delivery. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the, um, uh, the East African newspaper for this week, an interesting headline, The Resistible Rise of the New Breed of Strongmen. Uganda Parliament has taken the first step to prolong Museveni's reign and Pierre Nkurunziza is on a similar mission in Burundi. They have a picture, uh, images of President Thierry Museveni, uh, President uh, John Pombe Magufuli, President Uhuru Kenyatta, President Pierre Nkurunziza, and President Paul Kagame. Uh, and, 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 and that title, The Resistible Rise of the New Breed of Strongmen. If you remember strong, uh, mm -hmm. New Breed with uh, Madeleine Albright uh, many years ago and have a discussion today. It, it looks completely different. Uh, let me come back to the mm. TPC and the community mobilization debate we're having earlier. Honorable Kiraso, you have those uh, 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 discomforting statistics. To some people, they look, op they look at opportunities in these same numbers. Mm -hmm. Others will look at them as a threat. Uh, so where is the space to discuss this? Because you think if you have a community discussion, you're going to exhaust almost everything that needs to be discussed, even if you didn't find solutions for them. Mm. You have numbers for HIV AIDS, mm. very ugly. You have numbers for food inflation, mm. um, um, w w which is significant. Um, you have also, I think, there was another um, statistic that came out uh, recently. I remember as you answered, I'll put it to you. W where is the space? Um, how do you tap into these, either as opportunities or as threats to these communities? Yeah, actually, that, this is the space. The discussion in these, uh, in these uh, groupings, like the one we're going to have, that is where the space is. Mm. Uh, there are so many pieces of information out there that people do not have. Or if they do have them, they don't tie them together to bring something substantial on the table. The food inflation has come about because after the road was made, people are, you know, people are growing uh, their food and uh, getting good harvests. Vehicles go, bring all the food to Kampala. The farmers want money. The, actual, the food is actually crossing Kampala. It's going to Kenya. It's, it's going, going to Sudan. It's across the it's borders. Yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the people who are doing that cultivation do earn mm. the money. But they are left with very little for the nutrition of their children, for the food security of their families. Yes, I think the other statistic now that you put it was the malnutrition exactly. of children under five. Exactly. Yes. And I'll tell you something which we are going to repeat at this conference. 
something very key that somebody's brain development takes place between the time that person is born up to five years. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Mm -hmm. That's the time when a brain through the body should be fed mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. So if your children are not going to feed properly, by the time they are of school going age, even the brain will not be properly developed. Mm -hmm. Then we start crying about the quality of education or the quality of the people that we are churning out. So sometimes there is lack of awareness. Sometimes there is something good happening on one side, but on the other side it's causing a problem. Mm. So uh, we, we intend to, to emphasize on issues of, mal of, uh, of better nutrition and food security through awareness. Thank you. Let me take a message. From Mboga Mugiri, and it's it, 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 it's it's a fairly message, <laughs> and it's uh, uh, written very uh, interestingly by Peter Mboga Mugiri. He says, um, "Charles, please don't complain about a long message, because our development needs are really wide and deep." I'd like to thank Honorable Beatrice Kiraso and her colleagues for providing the critically needed leadership for social economic grassroots transformation. I'd like to advise them not to look for some of the solutions to our community challenges, one from public institutions, uh, no, I'd like to advise them not to look for far, not to look far for some of the solutions to our community challenges. One, public institution is Uganda Industrial Research Institute mm. and NARO. These two have very useful, relevant and appropriate simple technologies that could contribute to rapid change in local lives. For instance, uh, do you know that your, uh, Uganda Industrial Research Institute has demonstrated that banana stems provide fibers for textile production? This is an alternative to cotton which has gone down over the decades. Toro and other regions of Uganda can produce a lot of bananas, but communities regard the stems as headache, yet it is a huge resource. In Naro they have the Rwebitaba Zadi, where very useful and relevant crops such as apples and Irish potatoes, just to mention but a few, regarding Fort Porto being designated as a tourism city, of course, um, like Honorable Carasso correctly observes, communities are not being prepared to rise to the occasion to benefit from such a new development. Thanks. Thank you very much, Peter. <coughs> Charles, I you think uh, where I want to pick it up is uh, of all the problems you have enumerated in these communities, one of the weaknesses in the approach of groups, uh, regional groupings of uh, well-intentioned elite people is to try and play government. Mm. Or to try and... Sometimes they try to play government. Sometimes they, they, they want to channel the region's issues to government. The same government they clearly know has failed, mm. which necessitated the formation of these groups. Mm. And as I said earlier, they are often challenged that they have no mandate to do government-related kind of things. So I think they, are, they have two major ways in which they could contribute. And I've been trying to raise this in, in our SO groupings. Mm. One is you could take the welfare approach and directly associate with the people. Mm -hmm. By providing? Ha have a fund, mm -hmm. but also ask them to contribute mm -hmm. to have right to participate in or to, to, uh, to access. Mm -hmm. But the most important one, which I think we have failed in, is to actually invest. These are people who have money. Collectively, they can actually start commercial entities that should become the engines of growth in those, in those areas. areas. They can set up manufacturing plants yes. mm. and, uh, and utilize the agricultural products of mm. their regions mm. and employ the people of that region. Mm. Mm. That is something which is you, feasible. You, 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 in this way, you've been waiting for mm. years for government set up uh, that uh, fruit I don't know. Plant. I'm not among those who have been <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not among those who wait. No, no, no. I'm so, so my, my question is, if, 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 so, if so I, 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 no, I will be happy yeah. for TPC to eventually result in a huge factory in Toro yes. mm. out of their own monies. Yes. Yes. Not yes. again running to government. I'm saying you, that you, government have, been, was you, you have been waiting for that government factory <laughs> to process those fruits. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so to me, this should be my suggestions. Mm. Don't play government. Mm. Either do welfare mm. or do commercial undertaking mm. that will benefit but, but you must have a beginning wouldn't you of course you the, beginning, beginning. The, the good beginning is that they have money mm. but they is scattered in various hands money they ideas. have money mm. 
an idea. And the opportunity now the thing is, to bring people but I see most of the time they retreat to these academic people have papers, mm. present mm. papers. Mm. This is what we have a number. Going on. <laughs> 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 we have a number of papers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be breaking this down. <laughs> the, 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 the papers, PowerPoint presentations, no, no, and stuff no, no, like that. No. Yeah, there will be PowerPoint, but we have papers and discussions, mm -hmm. and then the audience will discuss yeah, and no. pick the points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, Regina, do you want to come in here? Um, as, 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 as some people have interesting um, views on um, the statistics, <coughs> the ugly statistics mm. um, um, about some of these social ills that we still face. Mm. Um, food inflation, mm. malnutrition among mm. children, mm. Uh, young children especially. Mm. Um, uh, you have uh, HIV AIDS numbers and stuff like that. I, I was talking to Honorable that what is actually happening in our region, particularly in Kavali, I have noticed that, of course, land in Kavali is very scarce. Mm. But even the little land that there is, people have been told to plant tea mm -hmm. on those small fields. Mm -hmm. They have been told to plant pines. And then, of course, these are, these are plantations that take long. People do not have money. And therefore, what actually happens is that you will find majority of the people with no food. Uh, there is a lot of malnutrition. But then I was also saying, where, is the, where do we press our priorities? Because if I don't have land, the best you can, I can be taught is to how to effectively use that land so that I can have a lot of food grown on it so that I'm able to have enough. food security. Mm. Yes, enough. And so uh, my, my concern has been wha where do people press their priorities when it comes to actually food security? We are, f we are found of selling food very fast mm. during the bumper season. There are no, they actually, we, do, we no longer have granaries. And for me, those are the basics. Th th I think the, the, the political actors have been saying the granaries are now in the pocket. If you have the money, <laughs> you can afford to buy the food. But what is, but what you, is You raise an interesting <coughs> issue, uh, Regina, yes. about, it's a struggle. It's an, uh, it's, I don't know if it's an ideological struggle. Some elite among the Banyachigezi, for example, yes. I have information. Yes. We're struggling to find what is that kind of crop that you can leave to your family mm -hmm. that gives them sustainably over a long period of time. Because mm -hmm. uh, Kabale grows uh, a lot of cabbage, grows a lot of Irish, Irish potatoes. potatoes yeah. You cannot bequeath a garden of Irish potatoes mm. because it will be harvested in a season. Yes. So the struggle to find a balance between a sustainable cash crop and food. And food. You, you, you have this, you end up having a problem like um, uh, there is in Busoga. You have one acre, three quarters of an acre, or all of it sugar is cane. planted under sugar cane. Sugar cane yeah. It takes 18 months to harvest the sugar yes. cane. It takes two years to begin harvesting tea, I think. Yeah. And then after that, how much are you able to get how out? I, what are the inputs are you, you need to put in? A lot. How do you strike that balance, Honorable uh, Keraso? How? Yeah. Uh, where do you find that balance? It's because going to be very complicated. Yeah. Mm. One, land fragmentation. Mm. Especially in areas like Kavali, as Regina is You saying. have a bigger problem in Tora, I think. <laughs> I think Kavali started faster. Yeah. Kavali started before Toro. <laughs> then the Bachigas started coming to Toro. Okay? Mm. But it's a big problem. Land is being fragmented. People are not expanding, you know, going to newer places. Mm. Even if they wanted to, the land is not there. So everyone is stuck around the great-grandfather's land. And the more they produce, the more they cut it into smaller pieces. And then there's the issue of money. Mm. I wouldn't even call it poverty. I would call it the need to have, to money, have money for other things other than food. Mm. So somebody is looking at school fees, somebody is looking at the basics, at clothing, at a house, and this and that and the other. The tendency to forget food security becomes very high. So they start scampering for whatever is available. And this is where awareness becomes very important. 
the government, I don't think, has come up to address issues of food security squarely. Mm. And you cannot tell me that food security is now, I mean, the granaries are now in the pocket. Mm -hmm. How much money is in the pocket? How many people right now, as we talk, have got enough money in their pockets to have a balanced diet or what one would call a balanced diet? So everybody is struggling just to have something to put in their tummies. Mm -hmm. But it has got a very long-term effect. Yeah. And the long-term effect is not only on children as we are saying, because those children be grow and become adults. So we are going to find ourselves with a very unhealthy population, mm -hmm. sick population, I mean of the country, and not, not sharp. Mm. Stunted is a, bit, is a bit rough. It's a rough word. But, but that's the truth. But I think it? it's the truth. Mm. We are getting stunted because we are not addressing the quality and the quantities of the food that we eat. We're about to begin, uh, to, 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 to begin the end of this show, uh, <laughs> to, to, to come to an end to, uh, of, 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 of nice discussion. Back to yes, I, I want to go back to Parliament. That's exactly <laughs> where I want to go back. I have I four minutes. I should go back to Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have... Uh, you wish you were there to vote. Go, I'm sure you're wishing you were there <laughs> no, to vote tomorrow. No, I'm mm. here. What would you vote for <laughs> if you're in Parliament? <laughs> you know my position. What's your position? <laughs> Look, for me, I think on this issue, what has been lost in this debate, you have just said there is emergence of strongmen. Mm. That because we have essentially a feudal society, mm. for, with all due respect, and uh, longevity of leaders is, 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 is sort of becoming the, the norm. I think this debate, especially when President Museven was seen to be on a back foot, the, the debate should have been, look, if you have to continue, and he, I'm sure he appreciates, like any aged person, that there are things he cannot do as he used to do. Mm. So what is the new changes that should be demanded of him as he potentially goes on for another 20 years? I think that debate has not been included in this amendment, mm. that it is possible in a family to relinquish someone from a, a, a CEO to a board chairman status, sort of mm. allow him to continue as the de facto head of the company, but he must cede some ground mm. to younger family members who are going to drive the company forward. Mm. So I think President Museven has not, I'm sure he has on many occasions said he's now an old man, he's a, is nurturing other people, is a consultant. What then for the next dispensation when, he, when age limit is removed and he possibly continues in 2021, what else should change? It, it, that depends on whether the mm. election takes place in 2021. With this even if, about even the without seven election, years. you mm. could even have no election. It wouldn't change much, but something in terms of the current ability of government to deliver, which is the reason some people all who oppose think he should leave. Um, that has been my position. So I wouldn't have to really vote for either. I think we, we, I would demand for changes in continuity. Uh, Bernard Tamere <coughs> writes a, a, a highly provocative, but I think very insightful mm. um, article in yeah. the Sunday Monitor today uh, on, on this. Mm. I, I, I don't know if it came today or, yeah, mm. or Saturday. But a very, very provocative, very mm. insightful on what is lacking in this debate. Yeah. Uh, and on either side, uh, but especially on the side of those people who are pro mm. the amendment, mm. yeah. uh, the, 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 the Majesty Bill, uh, mm. I recommend that people pick it up and read it um, for themselves because they don't want to, bi to bias anybody. Uh, Regina, you, 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 you have the debate coming up tomorrow. Mm. Someone was asking about the procedure in mm. Parliament. Mm. The bill will be presented for second reading. Mm. I think that's the process. Uh, at some stage, I have two former members of parliament. They can help us mm. with uh, what the procedure it's is. is yeah. mm. At what stage between the second reading of the bill and the third reading does the presentation of the report come in? Can I, can I ask yes. you, Charles, a question? What does it matter? No, people need to know the processes. I'm Let just asking the processes. TV. <laughs> yes. The, <laughs> what, what does it even <laughs> matter? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Whether it comes before the report or the reading, what does it mean? Do they want to become parliamentarians? Do they want to become parliamentary draftsmen and women? Mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm tired. And I think you started from there, whether what we are discussing here is adding any value, especially on the politics. Mm. This issue has been on all the airwaves, on all the televisions, in all the newspapers, from the day, actually before, Majesi presented the bill. Mm -hmm. I think it started yeah. when Abiriga said something, and then... Uh, it actually started last this year lady, with uh, uh, Kathero, somebody. Uh -huh. that presented. Yeah, yeah. It's yes. been discussed, it's been discussed every other day. Mm. What value are we adding? So, yes, there will be a report tomorrow. It will be debated. At the end of the debate, a question will be put. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah. And then people will have to pronounce themselves. And because we're not going to go into an omnibus, I, the eyes I have it, mm -hmm. people have got to stand and be counted. I think there will be an open vote. I think. Mm. For me, unlike Ona Pito, I don't know which side is going to take the day. Mm. I don't know. And I'm being very honest. You know, things happen in this world sometimes the most unexpected. Mm. Or sometimes the expected. For me, as me, what is going to be important is post tomorrow. Mm. Mm -hmm. The vote has been taken. The age limit has been removed. What is going to change in this country? And that brings me to Ona's question of the, in this, the whole of this debate, there are salient issues that are not being discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let the, the age limit be removed. And then what? And then what? That that you'll not hear tomorrow. Mm. Because it hasn't been part of that discussion of the discussion exactly. mm. since the beginning. And, it's, mm. it, and apparently, Regina, the, it's yes. not only age; there's even the the term <laughs> the five year. I don't know why five seven. <laughs> why not ten? Why not 15? 20? Why yes. not? I mean, what's magical uh, about 7? Seven? Seven. So I was not... The, the president interacting <coughs> with... Uh, uh, actually not engaging with the committee. Mm. Mm. Largely speaking to the committee, mm. uh, I, I, if that is the correct thing that happened, mm -hmm. um, told them, unless someone just wants it on their CV, mm. uh, 10 years, mm. you mm. can't do anything as a, mm. a, a as president of the country. And, so, and people have been asking, so um, if you look back... Mm done it for 30, what else can you do? Mm. Someone who has done it for four, or someone who has done it for three, mm. d does it really make a difference? So w the debate about seven or no limits at all, b because Wh what why is seven? It? Yeah. What if is you the said, magic about seven? I if you said um, <coughs> 75 and 35 of years, someone to qualify, mm -hmm. is discriminatory, mm -hmm. what is not discriminatory about seven or five? Mm. Uh, what are you trying to cure? Yeah. Regina, your last word on uh, <laughs> the debate that's happening that will be happening in Parliament tomorrow. As Alia mentioned, I think I, I still do agree with the Honorable that uh, the people have spoken, well, people have expressed their views, their opinions about the the lifting of the age limit. And what is going to happen tomorrow, I'm actually not sure of the side that will win. But whichever side will win, but let me try to be frank. I think the most probably the pro will take the day. Mm. And the reason why most probably it will take the day, is because uh, peop if, if they are going to vote openly, of course people fear, mm. and therefore those who want to cut the eye, those who have been uh, parading to be pro, will obviously not want to vote otherwise, mm. and therefore they might vote for the day and, 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 and maybe they take that day. But what is also important for the citizens of this country is the process. Mm. For me, the process has been 
one of the most challenging and embarrassing. But also the other thing we need to interrogate as citizens of this country is what next? Mm. Are our questions answered? Because there are so many questions that have been raised over this debate that have remained unresolved. And so at the end of the day, much as uh, the, the, the age will be lifted, many people will be left wounded. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course that is not healthy for the country, nor is it healthy for the governance of this country. Our time is out. We need to get out of here. Um, uh, it's Christmas next, uh, next Monday. So we'll discuss with Ona and uh, our producer to see whether we should do a show on uh, the 24th of December. Um, uh, about this, if we are, <laughs> if, if we are not <laughs> about what Christmas, <laughs> yeah. I think we should discuss the birth of Jesus on on, on 24th because it will be how many days after the debate <laughs> in Parliament? <laughs> it will be so many days and 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 uh, acres of space in newspaper in the newspapers. Um, um, I I don't know how many hours of uh, airtime on both radio and TV and social media discussing what will have happened in Parliament. And I think I, I want to agree with both of you, uh, both yourself and, um, and, and Regina, that the bigger debate is after tomorrow, yeah. what next? What does it mean when um, uh, either all safeguards are done with? Mm. What happens if uh, the team that wants the numbers tomorrow is unable to find those numbers? Mm. How do you move into Christmas and beyond that next year and the year after? But more importantly, has efforts around democracy and democratization and political leadership spoken to and answered the major challenges mm. that we face as a country that our communities face on a daily basis so whether you extend the time or don't well, extend the time yeah. do you actually are you actually dealing with the major challenges that uh, affect this country that is a question that we leave out uh, we leave to our viewers to continue the debate um, i've been seeing on some forums that uh, the live streaming is on, so the debate has been on and people are following uh, this discussion. Mm -hmm. We encourage you to continue the debate on uh, our social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Continue the debate and uh, there will be continuous interaction. If we're not able to join you again, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. And um, maybe you might need to say Merry Christmas to people uh, a week before, it's last week. To, to <laughs> Christmas. Do you want to? Merry Christmas. <laughs> You're not inviting us to the conference. I don't know if you're supposed. Do, 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 oh. are, are we? Do we need? Um, uh, uh, is there an entry fee? Is there? Are there invitations? Or everyone walks in. Where will the conference be? It will be in Kinyamasika Seminary in Fort Porto. And it's open. Mm. It's open for all people of Toro. And those outside Toro, but with an invitation. Okay. Which have already extended. Especially to in laws <laughs> like myself. <laughs> <laughs> Which have already extended. Yeah, but it will be very interesting. I hope Charles will be there. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I think I need to be there. And I, and I will be there. I, I'm sure about that. He has to be there if he has to have a political <laughs> career. <laughs> no, I don't no, need a political no, no. career. I have a sufficient <laughs> career where I am. So <laughs> I don't need a political <laughs> career now. Um, a last word from you, Regina. I wish to say that we all need to be alive and therefore mm. <coughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Drive safely, uh, live peaceful lives because at the end of the day our lives count as Ugandans. Y people fight most in families yes. around Christmas yes, time. Yes. Uh, the men who are unable to buy Christmas clothes uh, to buy meat, the women are able to do so many things. <laughs> that's why I'm and they drink a lot. That's, and that, they drink that, a lot. That's why I'm pointing out yeah. the issue of peace. Mm. That we need to be mindful of how we are going to enjoy during this festive season. Thank you. Yeah. Honor your last word from you. Yes, of course, uh, we are all most likely retreating to our communities, our villages over Christmas. And it just says a lot about mm -hmm. what those areas mean to us. That ultimately, they are the places where we came from mm -hmm. and it's even where we shall end.
mm. when life is really <laughs> ended. So I think when people go to, to church, <laughs> those who will go to church, they need to actually talk to the communities and share with the communities that how do we change. Mm -hmm. There is government and we have seen government, but mm -hmm. government is government. Mm -hmm. These problems ultimately are people's own problems. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's why I say Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year in advance in case we don't have a show. Mm -hmm. Our viewers have been wonderful and let them have a better We will definitely have another show before <laughs> at least the, the, the New Year. Um, <laughs> what will uh, resolve is uh, 24th. Uh, let me just read this last message. Um, um, from a member of parliament, I haven't been advised on whether they want their name mentioned or not. Mm -hmm. The rules of procedure are clear. For any constitutional amendment, each MP will vote after I or nay, not in a chorus. Although I hear a few opposition claiming they'll force the speaker to call each MP to vote for or against on camera. Uh, that's yeah, the procedure. We'll, we'll be watching uh, closely and NTV will keep uh, all our viewers uh, tuned into <coughs> what will be happening for the in uh, Parliament. Also. Yes. To see, to see how their <laughs> members of parliament are voting. Mm. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep you updated uh, with uh, live <coughs> updates from uh, parliament tomorrow. Uh, NTV will, uh, will bring that to you. And of course, the various other platforms uh, that we use to deliver the news to you will continue uh, to keep you updated through the Christmas season and particularly tomorrow's happenings, whether in parliament or outside of parliament. Just keep tuned to NTV and continue the debate on is community mobilization the solution to Uganda's challenges? And if you come from Toro, uh, no matter what your ethnicity is, um, uh, please go and attend that conference. And everyone going back home should make the best time, not just partying. Uh, I think the idea of the conference is a very good one. You don't just waste time mm. going back home and uh, <laughs> only visit. Have, have some serious and meaningful discussion. But remember, <laughs> take care of yourselves. Drive carefully. There are about three accidents today. Yes. I think involving a... Land Cruiser Prado TX involving that other car that killed a young man, mm. a very young man called uh, Nelson. Mm. Uh, Nelson died very tragic death and, and another accident. Uh, the, the, the lead of opposition survived an accident yesterday in Masaka Road. There was that ugly accident at uh, Kira Road, Bukoto Road uh, yesterday. Mm. We need to be a lot more careful and mind about other people using our roads mm. as we go into this uh, Christmas season. For me, it's a good night.